Hello people, Les the 6mm France 1940 bloke here. I'm going to get these railway tracks out of the way now. It's been hanging around for a while, as they do, and um, yeah, time to press on with them. I've got enough here for probably to go across a 6 foot table with a few bends and sidings and what have you. So there's a fair bit here. Some of the ends are going to need cleaning up. They're a bit rough and if you want them to butt up against each other nicely you're going to have to do something about those but see there's one that's got some luxury length appendages sticking out which might make it look a little bit less tidy when it's put down on the table well I've just done a little test on these two the left one is grey primer and the right one is that humbrol light stone and yeah it's a bit darker slightly darker but not excessively so so I think that might be the way forward it's certainly gonna be a lot easier so grey primer it is which is easy but looking at it I'm thinking yeah it's just too much like battleship grey even though when the dirt goes on top it's I'm afraid that it's going to look too much of a bluey grey. So, unfortunately, I had to come up with another solution. And what I've bought is this, but it's from DIY stores for a tenner. This is ivory, which, although it's a bit sandy, I suppose, it's pretty close to the colour I wanted for clean ballast. And then when the dirt goes on top, hopefully it all all right so I'm just going to do some test strips all right I think we're cooking with gas now I had to go with the humbrol wash which produced this which is well it's I might as well just use black paint so then I went over to the normal ink wash I use on my vehicles a few drops of Windsor and Newton black a drop of washing liquid and about eight drops of water I used a bit hit and miss but it always seemed to be the case with that stuff so having established that that is going to work for dirtying up the ballast spray all the track with this colour dry brush the sleepers uh, paint the rusty rails and the dirt wash on and then the silver to keep the silver nice and bright painting the sleepers just basically not dry brushing but getting plenty on the brush really and going one way with the sleepers and then the other way with the sleepers to just pick out the raised detail enough with this kind of creosote brown colour paint that corner of the rail and the bit of the top Flip it over, paint the other corner, and you'll have coverage on the top. Not my left now, thank God. Got to say, this is probably at least as boring as painting wheels. Slosh it on, dive it off. So there's the difference between one that's had the dirt wash and one that hasn't. The rusty colour has soaked the dirt up quite nicely so that's been toned down a lot. The sleepers show through the dirt and they show up nicely against the ballast which has worked out alright. So I've gone and got this metallic marker set from WH Smith's £3.79 pretty inexpensive as it says give it a shake press the nib button down a few times and the ink starts flowing through and uh, as you can see it, uh, it works pretty well got a good silver on there so it's a lot easier than using a brush and uh, neater I think than using a brush basically all I'm doing is With one movement like that, 
don't press too hard because it can make the line kind of thicker if that's possible points is a bit more fiddly obviously because there's loads of rails you might be one section in 10 which is a little bit rougher and you've got to go over again to get the silver to go down properly and I think you'll agree it's a lot easier than painting and I reckon it does just as good a job possibly neater well than I could get with a brush maybe you look out there with a lot more brush skills than me would do a better job but this is fine for me Okay, that's that all done finally. Just short of three metres of this Levin railway track I've painted, the matte varnish on top, that actually improved the look of the top of the rail because the silver market made it, frankly, a little bit too, I don't know, chromified. It looked a bit too shiny and the matte varnish has helped dull that down quite a bit, which has worked out all right. Bit of a close look at the track. I don't know if you can see in the light, but there is a bit of the side of the rail showing with rust on it before you get the clean top surface. And I did put a bit of flock in the where the rails come together there because there's a bit of a flat area there which looked a bit horrible with just the ballast, dirty ballast look. And I was thinking that what with all the soot and oil that uh, falls down from steam trains, you could probably in all honesty, get away with just painting this black and then picking out the top of the rail. But this was the look I wanted and it's turned out exactly as intended, which is good. If you're going to do passing loops, like what I've got here, what this is called, where trains can pass each other, I found out because of the geometry of these points, you've got to do some jiggery-pokery. And what I did was... I cut, well there's some over here, I cut these short by about four sleeper lengths or so, so and I've screwed underneath so I can tell them apart from all the others. And that's basically the bit I cut off. And the reason for these is that if you don't, you end up with a gap in the track where you can't make them join. That's if you've got normal length straights here. Yeah, you need a little bit extra to bridge the gap here because of the geometry of the points. Or the other thing you can do is, I think that's a, yeah, that's a short bit. If you've got complete straight lengths there, and you try and put a normal straight in, it won't go. See? But the bit you cut off that, to make a short straight to fit in there is obviously if you think about it exactly the same bit you need to put in there so by cutting one of these straights into you know a short straight and a tiny little bit then you've got enough custom length straights to do this kind of thing you know with two passing loops like if you've got a main station yeah so cutting one straight will give you enough bits for two passing loops and that's probably to be honest with you enough for most people's requirements there we are there's a Matilda one and some Belgian infantry for some comparison there I haven't got any uh, rolling stock yet it's entirely possible I'll have to get some now hope that was informative and useful to you and if you did like that 
If I was you, I would get into some 6mm wargaming. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.